22! And you know I had to start this year off right, so I'm coming at you with the one thing in life I can't control because it's a really good series and I love it. I also got a new mic and it's so pretty and I'm so happy. <laughs> and I love it so much. But back to this fan fiction. Make sure to go support the author because we love authors in this community. The link to this fan fiction as well as the music and sound effects, if there are any in this video, will all be found in the description below. So go check it out. I know you want to. You know you want to. So do it. <laughs> um, also, if you haven't seen Encanto, watch it. Watch it. It is so good. It is so good. And no, I have not seen Spider-Man No Way Home. I want to. But I'm broke. So <laughs> I'm going to wait until it comes out on Disney+. Plus. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to be really late. So if you spoil it for me, how dare you? <laughs> um, okay, yeah, that's all I got to say. I hope you guys enjoy. And okay, wait, did y'all see Little Space Freckles do intro? That little, I don't know what, what you call it, but it, it was so, with, like the, the picture, it was her hair and there was headphones and it did the cool sound effect. It was, ah, I need to do that. I need to make one because that thing was so cool. So I might have one, hopefully one day. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Mayday has one too. So I'm just late. <laughs> but um, um, that's enough for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I'll see you at the end, guys. Bye. Shay, it's time to get up. Alice's voice cut through the alarm after the first minute of Shay continuing to sleep. The girl didn't get enough sleep as it was, but the AI knew it was time for her to get up. I'm up, I'm up. Shay groaned, rolling over on her mattress and right onto the floor. Ow. Shay, you have about 15 minutes to leave for school before risking lateness. Shay's eyes snapped open wide. 15? Yes. Alice replied curtly, amusement lacing her tone. Shit! Shay struggled to her feet before staggering over to the closed boxes that she used as a dresser and sorted through it. Finally, she pulled out a pair of jeans and an old shirt that had been a hand-me-down from her mother. The girl moved out of her room, her steps much less jerky now as her body woke up. She moved into the bathroom and began brushing her teeth with one hand while she battled with her messy hair using a hairbrush with the other. She wasn't sure how exactly she managed to do that, but she did before stumbling out and into the living room. We got any food? Shay asked as she grabbed her tennis shoes and started pulling them onto her feet. This month's money from Catalina Lane was only sent in yesterday and you were busy getting ready for school. I'd advise getting food from a vending machine until this weekend when you should have a chance to go out for groceries. Alice responded. Got it, thanks Alice. Shay said as she finished tying her shoe and threw her backpack over her shoulders, slipping her arms into the straps. Shay? Alice's voice asked as the girl's hand touched the doorknob. The AI's tone was softer than normal, causing the teenager to stop for a moment and listen. Yeah, Alice? Shay replied, furrowing her eyebrows. What is it? Just... Alice's accented voice faltered for a moment before she softly said, just be careful, alright? Shay felt her heart speed up a bit as she heard the words that had been said to her by something she had created out of code. But she nodded. Of course, Alice. Have a good day, Shay. You too. The teenager closed the door and let out a small breath before turning and getting into the elevator. One risky ride down later and Shay was in the lobby. Hey Shay, you're up early. First day of school? You got it, Lob. Shay nodded, flashing him a smile. Sophomore year! Wish me luck! Lob laughed. <laughs> like you'll need it. Have a good day, kid. You too, Lob. Shay pushed through the doors of her apartment building and hopped over all three stairs to the sidewalk in one bounce, landing on her feet and regaining her balance relatively quickly. The girl began walking in the direction of her school with a wide grin on her face for the first time on the first day back to school after summer vacation. Maybe that was because this time, she had friends. Peter, as he often did on the first day of school, woke to Aunt May slapping him awake by hitting him multiple times on the shoulder. 
I'm up, I'm up, Peter groaned as he sat upright in bed. May, stop hitting me! You've got 20 minutes before you have to be out that door, mister, May said, still rapping at him now at his head with her rolled up magazine that was being used as a weapon. I'm not going to stop hitting you until you are up and walking into the bathroom. Fine, fine, Peter grunted, trying and failing to ward off her attacks before resigning himself to his fate and nearly falling off the top bunk before he managed to stumble into the bathroom, sighing with relief as his aunt finally stopped hitting him. The wax were more like taps anyway. He shoved a toothbrush into his mouth and brushed quickly, trying not to make a face at the overwhelming mint flavor that flooded over his tongue as he did so. He spat it out a moment later and washed out his mouth with water before turning to the mirror. He ran his fingers through his hair in an attempt to comb it back a bit before deciding it looked good enough. Peter left the bathroom and moved into the kitchen to be met with what could only be described as a complete assault to the senses. The smell, which he could only think to describe as burnt, was incredibly overwhelming. He glanced around to see Aunt May scraping something off a pad. Or at least, she was trying to. <laughs> it won't come off! She laughed as she attacked the blackened pan with a spatula. Want me to try? I don't need my pan bent in half, Peter, May responded, narrowing her eyes in concentration. Finally, she groaned in defeat and dropped the whole pan into the trash can. Still looking into the garbage, she said, Well, I think it's official. What's official? I have to adopt Shay so that we can survive and not die from my cooking before you have a chance to graduate high school. Peter laughed. All right, you take an apple for breakfast, I'll have a banana, and we'll go out for LARP tonight after you're done patrolling. The teen laughed again, but nodded, grabbing the fruit in question out of a small bowl that sat on the counter before turning to his aunt and giving her a hug. Have a good day, sweetie, May said, returning the embrace before shoving him towards the door. His backpack sat on the counter, and he grabbed it as he walked. Now go. You already promised Shay you'd walk to school with her, and I don't know what I'll do if you keep her waiting. Got it, May, Peter said as he opened the door into the hallway. Larb you, May called as he prepared to close the door. Larb you too. Peter was outside in less than a minute and adjusted the straps on his back as he waited for his friend. He strained his neck to look up and down the street, thinking briefly that he had missed her. Then, however, he heard the voice from up the street. Peter! The boy's head spun in the direction of the voice, and he felt his face split into a wide grin as his eyes landed on Shay, walking towards him quickly as she waved, a smile bright on her face as well. Hey, Shay! Peter called in response, giving her a wave as well. The girl sped up a bit before skidding to a stop as she reached him. You know... Shay said as they began moving in the direction of their school. This whole walking to school together thing is nice and all, but we're gonna have to keep it down to a minimum in terms of number of occurrences. Oh? Peter raised an eyebrow. And why is that? Because it adds an extra 10 minutes onto my walk just to go in this direction, and half the time I'm late or almost late to school anyways. Oh. Peter said, his face flushing a bit. Okay then. Peter's eyes landed on his watch as his previously red-tinged face blanched. We've got 10 minutes before the bell rings to get to our first classes. I've got my route memorized to the classroom, she said as they began to go at a fast walking pace. But not from the entrance this way. I'm in all the same classes as you, Peter said, repeating those words from the first day they had met. Technically in the future, but not really. Shay laughed. That's true. They increased their speed to a light jog as she made a face. Gotta deal with Mr. Azemheiner again. He hated you, didn't he? Only because I corrected him, and that was once. You also didn't engage yourself in class any other time. I'm sure that helped. Shay frowned and scrunched her eyebrows together. It's not my fault I already learned all the stuff. I mean, it kind of is. Peter, 
don't get on my bad side about this. The superhero fell silent. When does homecoming craziness start? Shay asked after another moment of silence that followed the two friends, turning a final corner and seeing their school in the distance. Uh, about a week, Peter said. Nationals are next Friday and stuff started happening right before then. Should we just call the cops about Vulture Guy? Peter sighed and clicked his tongue before saying, They'll ask for evidence. They all will. Honestly, I think the events that happened last time surrounding Homecoming were probably best case scenario. Anything could happen, and it would probably be easier to get stuff done with you here, but we should probably stick to the original way that things happened. And what is that exactly? Uh... Peter racked his brain for an answer to her question. I'm not exactly sure. I remember a few general things, but other stuff is hazy. It was a crazy time, homecoming, he said. Shay nodded. That makes sense, the girl said as they turned into the courtyard and ran to the doors as the last few students milling around made their way inside. Plus, Peter added as an afterthought as they pushed through the doors and started up the stairs two steps at a time. One of the main ways Mr. Stark actually thought I was capable last time was because of how everything at homecoming happened. And I don't know what I would do without Mr. Stark and whatever weird relationship with him I had. Shay nodded once again. Yeah, I only knew him for two days so I can't relate as much, but I still get it. Peter sent her a small smile as they made it up to the third floor and turned down the hallway. The warning bell rang above them and the crowd of students started filling into their classrooms. The two weaved through the masses of people until they finally made it in front of their first hour math class. A glance was exchanged before both entered the room. Ned and MJ, who were both in this hour, were already there, seated in the second most far back table next to one another. Ned gave a big wave as the two entered the classroom, as MJ pulled her bag off of the table behind her and the other boy nodding to the now empty seat with a meaningful look at the two who had just entered the room. Shay plopped into the seat behind MJ, Peter doing the same to the chair next to her a moment later. Thanks, the girl said as she dropped her backpack to the side of her chair. I'm not going to let my one friend and one of the only losers I can tolerate not sit somewhere close enough for me to talk to them," MJ explained sharply. Peter snorted and Shay stifled her giggles with her hand. MJ, I swear you're the best, the girl said when she stopped laughing. MJ smirked. I know. Alright, alright, everyone settle down, Mr. Isenheimer shouted over the excited chatter of the classroom. The man was average height with a blonde tuft of hair on his head and a bald patch in the back. Wide glasses were enormous in comparison to his small, beady eyes that he used to look around all the students in the room. He straightened his tie as all eyes turned to him. Now, you're all in here for pre-calculus. This first week will get you used to it. If after this week, you think you can't take the course? Talk to your counselor and drop down. The opposite is true if you think you are too advanced. Though I doubt this will happen for anyone, so don't get any ideas. The students, as students do, started talking amongst themselves before the man slammed down his hand to quiet them. Now, we are going to have a silent class period while you all start the pretest. Groans rang out, but the glare on his face remained firm. Any talking will result in punishment. Am I understood? A few nodded, a few said yes, but most merely glanced at him in acknowledgement. Peter could have laughed. First day and everyone is already tired. Shay finished the worksheet, the first part of the pretest, in 15 minutes flat. Peter finished 10 minutes after her with a time of about 25. As the girl brought out her notebook and started sketching some new designs, often passing it to her friend beside her for feedback, they clearly caught the eye of the teacher. Excuse me, you two in the back. 
All eyes flew to him, and then to the teens in question. What do you think you're doing? Uh... Shay said, looking at his furrowed eyebrows. He's looking over designs in my notebook for me? What about the worksheet you were assigned? We're both done with that, Peter said shrugging. The man spluttered. Done? When did you finish? This was an independent activity! Yeah, she finished in 15 minutes, Peter said, jabbing a finger towards his friend beside him lazily. I finished in 25. She beat me, like always. Eselheimer seemed to be at a loss for words. After a few seconds of awkward silence, he adjusted his glasses, cleared his throat, and said, Carry on. When the class period was over, he snatched the papers from the two best friends with a scary greed, as if he was excited to find faults with it, especially the girl that had finished his worksheet so quickly. Peter almost smirked. He knew how Shay worked. That man wouldn't find a single mistake. The rest of the day carried on as normal. When the bell finally rang and it was time for decathlon practice, Peter and Shay left their last class of the day talking about their first one. I would have moved up last year if I realized how bad Eselheimer was going to be, Shay said as they descended the stairs towards the decathlon room for their first practice of the year, despite nationals being next week. Me too, probably, Peter said. I was learning a lot of the stuff from this year a lot faster once I started working with Mr. Stark. I've probably got the whole year down pretty well now. Shay nodded. Yeah. They pushed open the doors to the room where Decathlon was held to be met with Liz Toombs getting right in their faces, resulting in Peter's exploding in a blush, clutching flashcards and asking, What is the surface temperature of the sun? 5,778K. Both sophomores recited to the senior at once. She nodded in satisfaction and moved on to the next victim. Peter could have sighed. He remembered how the week before Nationals went with Liz as captain. Dubbed by the rest of the team as the week to end all weeks. This was going to be an experience to say the least. Alice, wake, wake up. up, school time. Shay, I don't wanna go. Alice, I am an AI and I love this human child so very much. Stay safe, my little baby. May. Get up. Peter. I'm hurt. I am very much hurt. Shay and Peter. We already hate this teacher and we already know this stuff anyways. Let's just move up a whole level. Liz. Answer correctly or die! <laughs> Peter. Oh yes, this week. Peter. Good memories. 